Hello, everybody. We back again Monday night. Is this Tuesday night? Oh, Tuesday night. I've already lost track of time. Uh, well, since you can't watch Monday night football, waiting for everybody to get off on board here. Uh, hello, Olivia Winter, Danielle, and others trying to catch up. Um, well, since you can't watch Monday night football, you can watch Tuesday night Bible study. How's that? Yeah, this is a lot better, you know, because we know who's going to win on this team. Uh, so we're hoping you're all cheering for more of Jesus and a pouring out of his spirit. And uh, so thank the Lord for all of you. And we're, we've been a, been a very busy. I've been in the basement all day. That's where my new office is here at home. Uh, Carl and I have been teaching in Hanover, Germany, right from Olean. Or he, he's from Angelica, but we had a four hour teaching series going on. So if my voice seems a little off, it could be because it's tired. <laughs> Somebody said I'm tired. <laughs> but anyway, I, I got enough energy tonight. I'm looking forward to this Bible study and uh, I feel like it will fit right in uh, hand in glove with what we need to hear. And so uh, we have a family that texts me. I, they must be, they're from the Philippines and they, they're stuck in Scotland and they ask for prayer. I can't pronounce their name, but if they're listening, um, they were watching from there, believe it or not. And so we'll pray for them that they get home soon. They've been there for two months uh, tied up. So let's pray. For them and for this service in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for this family that needs to get home back to the Philippines. We pray you would give them safe passage and that they could get home soon. And thank you for keeping your hand upon them. We thank you also for touching Zach. This is Lyrica's little precious boy. He was injured at a daycare uh, yesterday. And so we pray that you keep your hand upon his little body, that he would heal up. And we thank you for everyone watching tonight. I pray that we can have something that would come just directly from you, O oh God, and use my, my voice as a channel to speak to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, so tonight we're going to teach on God's remedy for anxiety. And with that being said, there's a uh, man has a remedy, you know, uh, for anxiety and that's smoke another pack. That's drink another bottle. That's push another pill. Uh, you know, that's uh, uh, smoke some more weed. Uh, that's man's solution to anxiety. But as we know, that adds to the problem and causes more depression and so my remedy that i'm going to suggest is right from the bible and i know anxiety is a very real feeling it's a real emotion uh, many people are facing that today as there's so many things that are uncertain we keep getting bumped up on when things are going to open up and in some states the virus problem is getting worse according to their figures, if they're accurate, and that might be debatable, but whatever, we know we're living in, in a very se severe time. And so uh, we're gonna talk about Philippians. So you could have a Bible, you could flip over to Philippians chapter four, verse six through nine. And um, I'll read it. It says, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication, that means everything, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. This is familiar reading, I know, but it's timely. Verse seven says, <clears throat> and this is the result of obeying verse six, and the peace of God, which 
surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's a guarantee. That's a promise. If we will do it God's way, he has promised that we will have peace in the midst of adversity, in the midst of anxiety. Verse 8 gives us a little more direction on what to think about. Finally, my brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are a good report, <clears throat> if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Now, we know what meditate means. That means dwell on it. Don't dwell on the negative because if you do, your blood pressure goes up, you know. Verse 9, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, Paul says, these do and the God of peace will be with you. So we have the Bible remedy to being able to cope with anxiety. Um, many people are not coping too well right now. and maybe that would be you or me. If we didn't have God, how would we be coping? What would we be doing? Well, I'm so thankful that I've learned the reality and the blessing of being able to steal away alone with God and get to that mighty high tower, that refuge, that place, that zone of safety and security where we can pour out our hearts to God. We can sing and worship, and we can find his sweet presence. That's what we need, is getting into his presence. I want to read the same passage, just verse 6 out of Philippians 4, but from the message interpretation of the Bible. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Uh, okay, so here we have it. I'm going to go back to the word anxious. Bless you. Um, anxious means full of mental distress or uneasiness because of fear of danger or misfortune to be worried. Mental distress. There's a lot of mental distress going on right now. And that's why I feel led of the Lord to teach this lesson. You see, the thoughts that we allow to prevail in our minds will determine whether or not we will live in peace and harmony or whether or not we're going to live in worry and fear. Now, before I go any further, I don't want to condemn anybody because there's times that we all are worried. There are times that we are all full of anxiety. We hear some bad news. We see something bad. We feel something bad. And then the, uh, there's a trigger that goes on in our mind. And that's it sends probably messages through our body. And, and we, uh, we start becoming anxious, you know, until we can put the brakes on that. And, and we, can, we can get a hold of God and he can get a hold of us. And, and hopefully that period of anxiety is short-lived. We can cause through the power of the Holy Ghost, we can cause that, that, that brief, or maybe it's, it could be more than brief. It could be for, it could be for a day or two. You know, it's how many of us have lost sleep over something, you know, we all have, you know, because um, it's just, we're human. We sometimes, we, we don't do uh, what we know to do that works. But so this is going to be kind of a, a refresher reminder today. But I, I want to take particular attention in verse seven of Philippians four. The phrase is used and the peace of God. OK, it says the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then in verse nine, it's kind of flipped. It doesn't say the peace of God, but it says the things that you learned and received and heard in me do and the God of peace 
will be with you. So we have the peace of God in verse seven and the God of peace in verse nine, hand in hand. Thank God for peace. The only way we can have the peace of God is if we have the God of peace living inside of us. Obvious, isn't it? You know, um, anx anxious to be anxious is to be to to be uh, to worry. What is worry? Well, the Greek word translated anxious is careful, and it means to be pulled in different directions. Oh my! <laughs> I don't know about you, but I can't afford to be pulled for very long in two different directions. Our hopes, for example, pull us one way. And then our fears pull us the opposite direction until we just feel like we're being pulled literally apart, you know? And sometimes that's how life is. We just panic. We hit the panic button and we feel like we're just falling to pieces. We're, we're just being pulled in opposite directions. And, and so it's interesting as you study this word out, the old English word, root word from which we get the word worry it, you know what it means? It means to strangle. Well, I wish I had a volunteer on the front seat. I'd strangle you. <laughs> we haven't had a volunteer in a long time, Shane or Carl. <laughs> but the word worry means to strangle. And so worry has a definite physical consequence. What are some of the consequences of worrying? Well, headaches, neck pain ulcers, back pains. Worry affects our thinking. It affects our digestion system. It even can affect our coordination, believe it or not. That's how strong and real worry is. It, it, and it all starts in the mind. You know, the mind is a powerful thing. You know, the kind of thoughts we allow to dwell and live there and breed there can either make us or break us. And so from the spiritual point of view, worry, we could say really is just wrong thinking, uh, the mind. It's wrong feeling, the heart, about circumstances, people, or things. So I think we could all agree with this one fact. Worry is the greatest thief of joy. What is, you know, Remember, it says, I think in Nehemiah, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And God knows we need strength. We don't need human strength. We need God's strength. And um, I realize that more and more every day. I've got to have the strength of God. That's why when you say something about the message, you know, I, 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 I say, well, thank you for praying for us because I, Pastor Sean, we're, we're, leaning and depending on the prayers of the people of God, you know, uh, because there's a lot that we're feeding, <laughs> you know, and, and I, we can't continue to feed you unless we're being fed from heaven's dining room table. I'm thankful that God is the greatest chef. He's got, he's a master chef. He knows exactly how to feed our souls and spirits. And so, it's, it's like that reference I made the other day about the robin that's made the nest on our front porch above that wreath. And I've noticed from this, from this angle that I've looked out my window, there's two little baby birds, two little baby robins there. And so I watched many times through the day, uh, mom and dad bird brings that worm, you know, what a diet of worms. Boy, you gotta be crazy. Thank God I got something better to eat than worms. But Birds love worms. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not going to feed you worms here. We're going to feed you some soul food, some something that's going to be spiritually nutritious, spiritually edifying, uplifting, something that's going to add to your faith, something that's going to build your faith so that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord is going to raise up a standard against him so he has no chance. And so we've got to keep that guard around our brain, that guard around our minds. It's so important. So the antidote to worry is having a secure mind. And it's by doing, by having a secure mind, we've got to maintain that trust and faith in Jesus. 
you know, if we've got the faith like we should have, we won't be consumed with worry. And I want to, I want to say what I said earlier. Again, we're all going to worry at times. We're human, but there's something wrong if we live day by day by day in a depressed mode. We're not doing something right. We're not praying. We're not, we're not touching the hem of the master's garment. Okay. Now, as we move on, the peace of God, we've been promised in Philippians, and the Bible is true, right? Shall keep, meaning garrison, guard like a soldier, your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Praise God. Just think about the power of the word of God, this tremendous spiritual advice. This is this is not the words of men. Yes, men penned the, the word of God, but they wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost what they wrote. So these are not man-made words. These are God-inspired words. And so when we put these God-inspired words to practice in our daily living, we're going to have victory. We can't help but have victory. We're going to have a song in our heart. We're going to have a skip to our step. We're going to have purpose for living. We're going to have the joy of the Lord in our life. Praise God. The peace of God will operate like a firewall. I was thinking about this. It'll operate like a firewall of protection and protect your mind from any invading spiritual virus. <laughs> you know, our computers have to have a secure system to guard against uh, hackers and all these things, you know, and and so, you know, we need protection on our mind. And uh, again, this peace of God, how do we get that peace of God? Well, I'm trying to get there. I'm, I'm giving you little tidbits of information, but we, it's the will of God that we live in peace and harmony. It's not the will of God we live in confusion. It's not the will of God that we're, we're biting our fingernails and we're living in fear. So when you have a secure mind, the peace of God guards you and the God of peace guides you. So we have the guard and we have the guide. What kind of protection? With that kind of protection, who needs to worry? He's got our backs. Everything's going to work out. Quit stop or stop thinking about the negative and all the things that's not going to happen. Start thinking thoughts of faith. God is a way maker. He can make a way when there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. You see, if we're to conquer worry and experience the secure mind, we must meet the conditions and principles that God has laid down. And the three things that I just want to briefly mention that we've all got to do in order to win this battle of dominance. Number one, we got to pray right. You know, we've got to know how to pray. And I'm afraid many people have no clue on really how to pray effectively, how to pray in the spirit. Everybody talks about prayer and they, they say, I'll pray for you. But, you know, we're not talking about that little shallow kind of praying. We're talking about getting lost in the spirit, getting uh, in, in your closet of prayer until you feel nothing else is on your mind, but you making contact with the almighty. Praise God. It's it's powerful prayer. It's the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man that avails much. That's what's going to get the job done. It's when we pray, as Jude says, we pray in the Holy Ghost. We pray in tongues. We pray in English. We pray in tongues. We pray in English. Thank God. If you haven't yet received the Holy Ghost and spoken in tongues, you need to pray for the gift of the Holy Ghost. He wants to give you the gift of the Holy Ghost. Everybody, if you've not experienced that, you're missing out. And so I just wanted to throw that in there because we always have different ones watching. I did spend three different sessions on the three types of tongues and including in that was receiving the Holy Ghost. Let me get back to this. We need to not only pray right, we need to think right. And, and really this is all based out of Philippians chapter four. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, praying right. Philippians 4, 8, think right. Think right. And then Philippians 4, 9, live right. You know, we're going to, 
we got to pray right, think right, live right. And then somebody said, spit right. There was a day in my life I didn't spit white. It was brown. I'm thank, I thank God for deliverance from enough. There's a peace that does happen when we truly confess and forsake our sins. We call that repentance. You know, the reason it is peace, called peace that passes all understanding is because when you know God has forgiven you of all your sins and he has cleared your slate clean, and they've been washed away in water baptism in Jesus' name, you can have a clean and clear conscience. Thank God for a clean conscience. Amen. I, I tell you what, I'm, I am blessed with a clean conscience. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Money, fortune, and fame cannot buy this kind of peace I'm talking about. In order for peace to be lasting, it must come from within not from without. What do I mean by that? A new car won't give you peace. A new house won't give you peace. A new dress won't give you peace. A new suit won't give you peace. A new bicycle won't give you peace. You know? uh, another cat sure won't give you peace. You know, you're going to have more work. <laughs> so peace has got to come within, inside. You know, when you make it right with God. In the world, we're going to have tribulation, Jesus said. But in him, we can have peace. You can have nothing materially and have peace. And yet you can have everything materially and have anything but peace. You can have turmoil. Now, the three main enemies of peace are fear, doubt, and worry. That's enemies of peace, being afraid. There's a lot of people that are living in fear right now. I see them walking down the street with masks on. The other day I saw a mechanic wearing a mask. I've told a few people about it. The cheapest paper mask you can buy. And guess what? He was outside and he had must have uh, scraped his face on the underside of a car where grease got over. It. So he had a big smudge of grease on the outside of his mask, thinking that's going to be the healthiest thing to do. I'm thinking there's a lot of crazy people in our world, you know, and you know, if you need to wear a mask, wear one, but you know, let's use a little common sense. Clean the mask, get a different mask, you know. Oh my, I better get off that bandwagon. But all these three that I mentioned, fear, worry, doubt, are byproducts, and I, I, I might scare some of you when I say this, but they're by, byproducts of sin. And if we continue down this road, it's going, I promise, to lead you or I to a path of destruction. You can't continue to live in fear. The Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. If you're afraid of dying, it must be because you're not right with God. I'm not afraid of dying. I don't think about dying, you know. Uh, there was a time I thought I was going to die. You know, and my main concern is somebody prepaid for a boiler. I was having a heart attack. My wife was driving me to the Olean General Hospital. Severe pains in my chest in 2012. And all I could think of is somebody paid me in advance before the boiler was ever delivered. And I says, all that money that's in that account is not ours. It, go, it belongs. And I gave her the name of who it goes back to if, some, if something happens to me. You know, that was, you know, but uh, so we don't want to want to live in fear. We don't want to live worried about every little thing. If we're worrying, we're not praying. I'm going to just be very blunt. Why not pray instead of worry? The three main allies of peace are prayer, worship, and faith combined with trust. Praise God. Do you have a prayer life? Is your prayer life in order? Is it intact? Do you pray every day? Do you, you know, these are something that helps us to keep the enemy at bay, you know? Um, so all of these three byproducts, again, of prayer, worship, and faith, 
are byproducts of pursuing your salvation and drawing closer to God and totally committing yourself to Jesus Christ. How can prayer, somebody says, how can prayer and worship help me maintain peace in the midst of the most trying times in life? Try it. It works. I tell you, it works. Some people need a pill to get up with, a pill to go to sleep with, and a pill to function throughout the day. Because help them, oh God. You see, if we do what I'm saying the word of God says to do, it gets our mind off of the problem. And instead, we put our mind on the problem solver. Because Jesus can fix this. Praise God. He's got every tool in his box to fix any and every problem that could ever happen to you and I. Praise God. He's got all the tools necessary, and he's more than willing, more than capable. He wants to help us, but we've got to ask him for help. Hallelujah. Psalms 29, 11. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. So I rebuke this spirit of fear that's in our world tonight. In the name of Jesus, you might want to pray that prayer in your home. If you feel like there's just such anxiety, why don't you just just begin to go through every room and I rebuke this spirit of fear and we're thanking you in advance. We're going to just start worshiping you and praising you. Have, Have you ever noticed by singing one of the songs or choruses we sing in church, how it just lifts your spirit, how all of a sudden you feel light, you feel the heaviness go away, you feel the gloomy, doomy, uh, gloomy uh, darkness of thought begin to disappear. It works. Hallelujah, it works. Psalms 119, 165, great peace have those who love your law and nothing causes them to stumble. Praise God. What tremendous. We have scripture that helps us to, Jesus overcame temptation with, it is written. He said in Matthew chapter four, every every time Satan came tempting him, when he was in the wilderness, in the desert, he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, just right after being baptized by John the Baptist. And here Jesus is facing all kinds of attacks on his mind because His body is hungry. He's weak physically. But every time he said, it is written, we can use the same method Jesus did. You know, it's written. And here I'm I'm giving you some scriptures where it says it's written. Uh, How about this one? Isaiah 26, 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Oh, yes, my mind to be stayed on Jesus. Stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Satan wants to get us distracted. He wants us to look at the problem. He wants us wants to he wants us to look at the situation that causes the anxiety. I want to read the New Living Testament of Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep him in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. That word in King James Version that says he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you means fixed on you, locked in. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I've I've got, I'm embracing this in Jesus' name. Yeah, we may be going through a a rough storm. It might be a rough ride. It might be a little shaky, but we're going to hold on. Hallelujah. John 14, 27, Jesus said these profound words, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's what Jesus said. Yeah, we we live in trouble sometimes, and the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, the more troublesome it's going to be. You know, we've said it many times, but you know what's happening right now? This is a trial run, I believe with all my heart, for the coming of a one world government and the Antichrist and a mandatory uh, chip being placed either, either in the forehead or in the right hand, just like 
John prophesied would take place in Revelation chapter 13. And if you take that mark of the beast, you if you don't take it, you can't buy or sell or trade. If you do take it, you're doomed. That's why we believe the church, the people of God, will be raptured out of here before that's made mandatory. So, so instead of worrying about it, it's we already know what's coming. We know the judgment of God is coming. So we are preparing ourselves. We're trying to reach people. We're trying to give you the good news. Now, Isaiah 28, verse 11 and 12 is a prophecy referring to the Holy Ghost that came in Acts chapter 2. He says, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. You see, there's something about getting lost in the spirit that when we get lost in the spirit, we are not conscious of, of the here and now for a, a, a period of time. And, and we get lost in the spirit and we feel like we're sitting in heavenly places. And, and all of a sudden there's a rest that comes to us that's beyond human description. It's the best rest there is. It's the peace of God that's in there because we are in his presence hallelujah just to be in the presence of god is an awesome thing thank you jesus isn't god good today hallelujah hallelujah coming to a close real soon isaiah 9 6 time gets away when i'm having fun <laughs> unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and what? The Prince of Peace. Prince means commander, chief, master. You see, this prophecy was about the Messiah, Jesus. All these words are describing his character, his person, in the fact that he is, he is the chief of peace. He is the commander of peace. He is the master of peace. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Oh, Jesus, let's pray right now. Lord, I pray the spirit of peace would go into every home of every person that's listening and watching right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, as we rebuke that filthy, ungodly spirit of anxiety and doubt and unbelief and and fear in Jesus' name. We thank you for that cloud of your Shekinah glory that can just, just totally settle in into every heart, into every home in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Thank you for your precious touch. I'm out of time right now, so we may have to have a part two. I'm not sure, but I got a lot more notes I could go from, but I feel like uh, God is ministered tonight. And I, I know just preaching this, teaching this, I feel peace myself. You know, I, I really do. I feel going over these scriptures that we need to be reminded that, that Jesus is our savior, that he is the prince of peace and that he can, he, he can calm the storm. Whatever storm that's going on in your life, he wants to help you get calm. And usually in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the adversity, in the midst of the trial, that's when we're going to find a deeper relationship with God. Have you ever noticed that? Hard trials produce powerful victories when we stay connected to Jesus. Praise God. So I say God bless all of you and good night. And we thank you for your your um, prayers. We do need your prayers. We're very busy this week. Uh, I'm going to ask you to pray for Brother Carl Hutchison and myself every day, again today, from noon to four, along with another pastor in Wisconsin. We're teaching uh, people in Hanover, Germany, by way of Zoom. And uh, some of them do not have the full revelation. Uh, some do, 
and we're teaching. And so uh, along with what we're doing tonight, it does uh, fill the schedule very much. So I, I do covet your prayers for strength, for anointing, that we can be effective both in Germany and here. In Jesus' name. God bless you. A good night. Thank you, Lord.